It's so lovely to be back here, and this is the one thing that gets cemented in the calendar, and it means everything to be here. Um, today's been amazing, and I just want to reflect a little bit today just on a few of the things that we've seen. Um, we've had some amazing speakers. Um, I very selfishly stand at the side of the stage and take dodgy photographs, and... <laughs> and then Photoshop them really heavily. Um, there's some really beautiful people on this stage. Um, anyway, I want to talk really specifically about a friend of ours who can't be here this year. Um, bear with me, this isn't very easy. Um, this is Jeremy Richman. He's, he's the one on that side. <laughs> Jeremy here is probably teaching the Dalai Lama a thing about peace. And I, what I love about this photograph is it represents peace and it represents love. And what a perfect photographic metaphor of this room and you guys and what's happened here today. Now, Jeremy spoke in this very spot two years ago. And was anybody, could put your hand up if you were here for his speech. Okay, so there's a, It'd be nice maybe at the reception if you could just share maybe a little of his story if it's appropriate with people who don't know. It's not, it's not my story to tell, it's definitely his. But he was, he's magnetic. Um, he's a lovely guy. Uh, he stood on this stage and talked about how the worst thing that could possibly happen in your life could translate itself into really serious thought and a movement towards change. And basically what befell Jeremy was the unimaginable thing of losing something that you've brought into the world in circumstances that make no sense, where it seems as if socially and politically, even after the tragedy, the world seems to be racked against you. And I'd sensed that when he was here, Jeremy really felt he was in a proper family of people who fully empathized and really love and actually want to do something about it. Now, Jeremy's Facebook page is brilliant. It's every Friday he would publish a haiku or a fryku, as he'd call them. I was searching for one the other day that I do remember reading, which basically went, excuse me, children. But that's the wrong number of syllables, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jeremy, forgive me. <laughs> forgive me. Um, and in fact, when he was here, he, he did this lovely one about being at peace love. He took this photograph and he posted, it's still Friday on the, on the best coast. My Friday haiku, fryku. There it is, nice work. Um, and he wrote this, searching to know why, wandering the mind's bad lands, Finding peace of mind. That's just lovely. He, he, loved, he loved it here. Um, and I, again, I was standing at the side of the stage taking dodgy photographs. And this is the one that came out. And what I love about this, and it's not any talent on my part, it was complete coincidence that the lens of my camera was dirty. And it looks like he's throwing this ball of light up in the air and it's gone poof. That's a fingerprint on the lens. That's all that is. Sometimes cock-ups make good art, though. I've based my career on that. <laughs> anyway, when words run out, music starts, I think. Maybe that's because I'm not very good at speaking, but sometimes the things can translate themselves. And um, with your permission, I'd just like to play a piece of music that hopefully means something to all of us about Jeremy. So this is, this is a piece for him.
through the sharing of our stories. My story is changed by yours, and they grow. Just like an animal uh, species is fit, the more variety, the more diversity is in its gene pool, the more imagination, the more ideas and creativity we have in our ideas, our mean pool, the fitter and stronger we are. Those of us that can share our knowledge are the ones that communicate, connect, collaborate, and create were the evolved humans. Ultimately, humans are unique because of our imaginations. And it's the ultimate ability to be humane that makes us human. And that's our responsibility. sharing of our stories. And it's the ultimate ability to be humane that makes us human. And that's our responsibility. Let's change it up a bit, shall we? Um, I must thank my son for helping me write that. He's, uh, he's 12, he's, like, he's helped me with the, editing the video. I was like, I can't do this. He was like, it's all right, I've got it, Dad. Um, uh, uh, by the way, all of those words were by Jeremy. I forgot to say, those were all of his five kids. It's so good. Um, I love this one. Celebrate diversity of thought. Solve a puzzle. Um, oh, sorry, excuse me, I don't normally ball on stage. To solve a puzzle, unite discordant viewpoints and embrace the diverse. That's, that's great. I mean, it, it fits for today. It also fits for when we leave here. We're trying to explain to people who aren't necessarily empathetic, who don't necessarily understand mental well-being. I think that's really cool. So let's just have a quick look at people who've been speaking today, but more importantly, the kinds of things we've heard, and this is my own sort of biased view because I've got a really short attention span and I can't really retain much information. Um, I love that photo of Scott, Scotty in the middle. I was crouching behind him and he looks like he's singing in Madison Square Gardens. <laughs> Talking of which, 12 rounds in Madison Square Gardens. My God, I, I don't know how you do that. Jeremy was a, was a kickboxer, I, I believe. And um, I've just started doing that. I can't survive two minutes. Um, so, amazing. Anyway, what we've, some of the things we've learnt, we, we have work to do, and um, by the way, I think if you ask Devon nicely when he sells you a picture, he'll probably give you a sticker that says that, and you can wear it with pride. I think it's a really important message. And I was thinking about this, we have work to do, and that, I, I'm, I steal things to write music, normally things like speech patterns. So, we have work to do. Do, 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 do. Oh, I think I'll turn that as a piece of music, so I thought I might do that now, if that's okay. But try and base it around some of the other things that we've heard today as well. For instance, one in four people, we've heard that today, we, were not, we know what that refers to, so I thought, well, I can make it in four, four. That's easy. You know how spurious these links are gonna be. Um, and maybe we can talk about the fact that 
Sean used radical hospitality. I think that sometimes means cooking someone a meal if they didn't know they wanted you to cook a meal, or playing them a piece of music that they really didn't know they wanted to hear. Yeah, I'm that guy, I'm sorry. I'm the one that if I walk into a pub with a cello and someone says, oh, go on, give us a tune, I'll go, okay, I will. <laughs> and let me tell you, when you sit in a bar, a pub in East London, that's pretty rowdy, and you start playing unaccompanied bark, the guy who asked you gets profoundly embarrassed. Because <laughs> I will say yes. So radical hospitality, because I'm going to inflict some music on you. And then build friction in, well, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to play. That's a bit of friction, so you should all be very nervous. That's cool. Um, I love the thing of friction. That's how you get pearls, isn't it? Noises, is that little bit of grit, that bit of sand. That's really cool. I have this argument with people who try to invent new musical instruments all the time, that oh, we're trying to simplify the interface. Why? It's, it's great learning things that you can't do. And then transcending an instrument or a pencil or whatever. Anyway, sorry, I'm rambling. Um, reconstruct your smile for free. I thought that was an incredible thing. I, how many people's smiles could we reconstruct for free when we leave this room? I thought it was an amazing message this morning. And then, actually what Scott said, Scotty, uh, changes make our journey interesting and different. Ain't that the truth? Right? So with all that in mind, and I'm going to go 12 rounds on this. No, I'm not going to do it. Nice and short, because you all need a drink now, I'm sure. Um, so this piece is called We Have Worked to Do It, and it's based on all of those things. It's by me. It's probably the first and the last performance of this piece. Um, I can't remember what note I thought as I walked out on stage it would start on, so... I'll see you at the end of it. It should be three minutes and 20 seconds long, approximately. And thank you very much for listening.